right, USFL week three. Jordan Tapu, he recovered a little bit slightly. You know, we're talking Tampa Bay Houston first from Saturday, Saturday early, the early game on Saturday. Clayton Thorson just wildly inconsistent in this game. Um, you know, Tampa Bay was able to win with a field goal from Tyler Rouza. Clutch, finally somebody being clutch on kicking in, in this league. And the weirdest thing about it is Anthony Ratliff Williams's bizarre touchdown catch, which I don't think should have been a touchdown because it looked like he dropped the ball, but apparently it I, I can't even describe how insane it was because you have to look and see how, how insane the catch was. The, what a bizarre touchdown. Probably the most bizarre touchdown I've ever seen in my entire life, and yet it happened. Um, Birmingham, New Orleans, that was hyped up. You know, it got fl you know moved because the USFL wants to put their best games in the best time slots and whatever. Jamar Smith had a bad day, but the Stallions defense, DeMarcus Gates, or DeMarquis Gates, Scooby Wright, they won the game for the Stallions. They got the game done, you know. Even though the Kyler Slaughter to Johnny Dixon connection, it was nice. But, I mean, the Breakers made way too many mistakes, fumbles. You got a bad interception at the end of the game. You got a safety. I mean, uh, you know... I thought it was a touchdown at first, but it actually was a safety. You know, Birmingham just made the plays in this game that put them at 3-0 to start the season, which I don't think, you know, a lot of people expected. I don't think a lot of people expected Birmingham to be at 3-0, and and yet here we are. And then Sunday, um, you know, Sunday games, not a lot to really go over here because Pittsburgh got shut out against Michigan, 24 zip. Sad. That's real sad. Couldn't even put up any points. You know, Paxton Lynch, he got hurt. He got the start, but he got hurt. You know, had to go to the locker room and he played he played a he played a good game. He was passing, he was running, you know, getting two point conversions, you know, he, he was doing it all. He was doing what he needed to do out there, which was play quarterback. You know, be be that guy on the team. Because Michigan didn't even go for PATs in this game. Oh no. Oh no. They they went for it each and every time. And it's real sad, you know, honestly, that Pittsburgh just could never get anything going. We're talking multiple times inside the, you know, fourth and goal situations where they couldn't get anything going. Missed kicks, of course, you know, just sad, 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 sad stuff for the ballers. And then, you know, New Jersey, Philadelphia, which just finished up uh, the Generals. 450 plus yards most of it on the ground with DeAndre Johnson you know and Darius Beal with the two touchdowns nice very nice the generals are atop the north division and even though Case Cookus replaced Brian Scott after Brian Scott got injured he played alright I mean you know New Jersey just you know overwhelmed Philadelphia with you know, the run game and stuff like that, you know, because, I mean, they ran the ball down their throat, you know, and, you know, the broadcast is just on and on about, you know, New Jersey just running the ball all the way down, you know, you know, Philadelphia's throats and whatnot. I mean, it was just sad to see that Philadelphia could never get any momentum to try and stop the attack of the Generals. So, it's going to be interesting now that Pittsburgh is the only team with no wins, and Birmingham is the only unbeaten team, and a lot of teams are either two and one or one and two. So, week four gonna be real intriguing to see. You know, we're gonna come on back and you know, come on back on Thursday because we got a Friday night game, a real late Friday night game. You know, um, a couple of Saturday, you know, a, a Sunday game. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be lit this weekend. Let me tell you, it's gonna be lit this weekend. So cannot wait. USFL Week 4 preview coming right up on May the 5th. I'll see you all then. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the notification bell. And, you know, do all that good stuff. And I'll continue to come at you with USFL content throughout the rest of the USFL season, everybody. And until that time, you know, I know, the, I know these recaps are kind of short. But, I mean, you know, they're just hasn't been as much to talk about as the last couple weeks 
you know, because we're kind of getting real into the nitty gritty now. So, you know, the season, you know, narratives have been set. So, something's got to give. Something's got to give. And the script, you know, for gridiron football, it does not care about, you know, your feelings. You know, it's going to change on the dime. So, in any case, that's it. I'll see you all Thursday, Thursday evening, you know, USFL Week 4 preview, and then Sunday for the recap. Take care.